In this problem, we're going to be able to connect some of our trig stuff to quadratic functions. So quadratics and trig does come together all the time, especially in equations where we're squaring a, a sine or cosine function. Now, here we have two quadratic, two trigonometric functions, and I think it's in our best interest. And I, you know, as we get better instinct in these kind of problems we realize if we can get both of these written as, as either sine or cosine, then we have a problem that we can deal with. So we have our, our sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. That's a trig identity I always hold on to, to to build off of, because I I use this build off of it. I can't remember all these other functions, but um, what I can see here is if I subtract cosine x from both sides, I'll have sine squared of x equals 1 minus the cosine squared of x. And that's useful because we have a sine squared in this equation right here. And we should rewrite it in terms of cosine. So now we have 3 times, instead of sine squared of x, 1 minus the cosine squared of x. And that's going to be equal to 1 plus the cosine of x. Um, now I can distribute this 3 to the parts in the parentheses, 3 times 1, and then 3 times minus cosine x. So we get 3 minus 3 cosine squared of x equals 1 plus the cosine of x. I'm going to bring everything over to, to this side of the equation because I want to, I don't want to, I want to get rid of this negative 3 cosine squared of x. I want to get a, a positive. So I'm going to add cosine squared of x. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Subtract 3 and add 3 cosine squared of x. Here, this is 0, right? 3 minus 3 is 0, and negative 3 cosine squared of x plus 3 cosine squared of x is 0. And that equals, well, here we have 1 minus 3, and that's negative 2. I'm going to leave some space here. And we have 3 cosine squared of x plus cosine of x. And, and here you can see that quadratic formula starting to, to pop out. And I'm just going to kind of substitute cosine um, of x for, let's say, uh, r, right? So that we have, instead of cosine of x, we're writing this in with r, just it might be a little bit easier to see. So now we have 0 equals 3. Well, what is cosine squared of x going to be? Well, if cosine of x is r, then that's r squared. And then here, instead of cosine of x, we have r, and then minus 2. So now I'm going to use my, my quadratic formula right, um, to solve for r, or x, whatever. So r equals b, oh, negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's the quadratic formula that I'm going to be using. So r is going to equal, well, what's my a, b, and c term? Well, a is right here, it's 3. So a is equal to 3. And b, that's equal to 1. Right? There's a 1 right here. And then c is negative 2. And we can just plug that in. So r will equal minus 1 plus or minus b squared, that's 1, minus 4 times a times c. Well, a times c is negative 6. Negative 4 times negative 6 is positive 24. All over 2 times 3, which is 6. So I'm just going to write 6 down there. And that's going to equal negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 25, which is 5, over 6. So r can have two values. r could be, in the first case, negative 1 plus 5. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4, and 4 over 6 is 2 thirds. Or r could be negative 1 minus 5 over 6. Well, what is negative 1 minus 5? That's negative 6. And negative 6 over 6 is just negative 1. So this is going to be helpful to us. We have r equals negative 1, or r equals 2 thirds. If you think back to what we said before, we were setting r equal to cosine of, of x. So now we're saying if r is negative 1, right, r equals negative 1, then the cosine of 
x needs to equal negative 1 as well. So we have to find out what value of, of x, what value of x, if you take the cosine of it, will give us negative 1. And, it, and to do that, we find the arc cosine of negative 1. And that is pi, or 180 degrees. And then we go the other way, right? We, here we have also r equals 2 thirds. I don't know that one, but the arc cosine of, of, of 2 thirds, right? We can press second cosine of 2 thirds. And in radians, I get 0 0.84106 in, you know, decimal. Um, in degrees, it would be different. But what we're saying here is that um, in, this, in this function, right, especially right here, to get zero, um, we could take the cos. We have cosine be equal to pi, right? The x value, excuse me, the x value be equal to pi. So x could be pi, or 0.84106867. So either way, it's this works just like a quadratic equation. We have two values for x, right? And just to kind of establish that this actually makes sense, let's plug these values of x into our original equation to see if, in fact, it works. Now, I'm going to plug in the x equals pi just because it's neater, um, but we could also plug in this decimal as well, and it would work. So anyway, the 3 times the sine squared of pi, does that equal 1 plus the cosine of pi? Well, pi, we're thinking about radians, that's 180 degrees, and at that point, in our unit circle, right, here's a unit circle, 180 degrees opens up from here to here, we're at this point. So that this point, well, where is it? Well, it's at negative 1, 0, and the cosine is equal to, of this point is the negative 1 value, the x value, and the sine is the, the 0, the y value. So this is, this is 1 plus negative 1, because the cosine of pi is negative 1, and 3 times the sine of pi squared, we'll think about it that way, which is 3, well the sine times the times sine of pi, and that's just 0 s squared, so that's, and this is 1 plus negative 1 is 0, and 3 times 0 is 0, so that worked, we get 0 equals to 0. And I think it's kind of great that, that um, the quadratic formula even applies to all the stuff we've been doing with trig functions as well. And we find these two values of x which we can plug in to our equation. And all we have to do is mess around with our trig identities, write this all in terms of cosine, and then solve using the quadratic formula. Pretty fun stuff.